everyone. Welcome to the Cluster Lifecycle introduction section. Uh, yeah, it's not what many people yet. It's also fun to be like the first maintainer track of the day and then the beginning of a conference. Um, but before we talk about our cluster lifecycle, let's uh, say a couple of words about like who we are uh, and why we are oh. uh, and why we are here. Hi, and this is the second time we talk about the six class lifecycle in Kumi Khan, China. And I'm Di Xu from China, of course, I'm Chinese local, right? Um, I work from on financial. I am a top fifty uh, code contributor in the whole community. Uh, and my GitHub handle is DxDx, so if you got any questions or uh, problems, don't have, don't get hesitate to contact me with uh, GitHub or Slack. Uh, and I'm Alexander Kanievsky. I, I work for Intel uh, as a cloud software architect. Uh, I'm based in Finland. Uh, my GitHub handle is cut. Uh, so again, also, uh, if you have questions, please contact. Uh, uh, I'm one of the reviewers of CubeADM, which is part of C cluster lifecycle. And uh, I have also interest in several other uh, areas like Node and a few others. So, all right, so we see cluster life cycle. So who we are and what actually we are doing. Um, we see cluster life cycle is one of the biggest, if not the biggest uh, seek of a Kubernetes community. Like we have uh, 600, more than 600 people on the main list. We have more than 2,000 people on the like main sl our Slack channel, C cluster lifecycle. And if you look at all our our Slack channels, like UBDM and ours, uh, you you will see a lot more people than that. We have incredible amount of companies, like it's literally dozens of the companies who contribute. Uh, we have contributors all around the world. Probably we don't have anyone from Antarctica yet, but who knows, maybe. Um, we have quite significant amount of um, commit counts or pull requests per cycle. So it's like in order of thousands for our projects. And C cluster lifecycle is not like just one project. We have a collection. It's an umbrella for like more than 15 projects uh, in overall uh, with smaller tools. So what we do? Um, let me quote the mission, our mission directly. So the SIG cluster lifecycle objective is to simplify creation, configuration, upgrade, uh, downgrade, and tear down of, of clusters. And um, it sounds simple, like creating a cluster or upgrade, but actually every such of this operation is uh, quite loaded term. Like what we do on each step, how we do it properly, how we do it user friendly. And like that's the reason why why exists, why we are making our tools. That was a concrete statement, which actually had many pieces into it. So we are doing this since because we don't want to end it up in a situation that the only way you run Kubernetes is too complex. So uh, you may spend too much time to install a, a whole cluster or spend thousand dollars to some company to uh, help you bootstrap a cluster. So we want to try to reduce the complexity. Uh, actually, we have made up several projects targeting different uh, attacks, uh, like Kubis Red, Cops, and uh, also other, uh, and Kubis uh, Ming, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, sorry. Sir. And uh, actually, the Kubi naming try to uh, to simplify the, the bootstrapping steps that you try to bootstrap a cluster and try to intend it to be a building block that other tools can rely or reuse the, the some modules that could be me use to help you bootstrap your own cluster providers. Actually, uh, many companies are using Kubi to uh, to to develop or uh, on the Kubernetes to develop their own bootstrap uh, tools. Uh, 
So uh, to look in a bit graphical way what we actually do. So with KubeADM, one of our major and like one of the first building blocks what SIG cluster lifecycle created. So it has a scope. Like as, as we are doing the Unix style principle of defining the tools is like do one tool, do this tool, uh, make this tool to do one thing, one thing which is good and be a building block to, to a bigger solution. So the Cube IDM is used uh, by other components of our projects. And then as soon as we start to evolve the Cube IDM, we found out our pieces would uh, we consider it to be like reusable blocks across different uh, cluster deployment and configuration solutions. So that way we, uh, we end up of creating the ETC, ETCD ADM, like the, the tool which is specifically like special operator with hel which helps to deploy the high available ATCD cluster for uh, Kubernetes deployments. And when like cluster add-ons, we have Inside Cube ADM, the two main add-ons what we need to, to have for have a conformant cluster like the DNS and Cube Proxy, but we might want to have a lot more additional cluster add-ons, and we need to first define like what is actually cl cluster add-on and what is the application and where is the border between those, and when. When we start to configure the cluster through a cube ADM, we realize that what we need to have a common configuration mechanism. So that's how this uh, component config working group organized it and how we started to uh, improve our components beside our scope. And when cluster API, again, it's a piece of, of uh, building blocks what uh, operate uh, like what cloud providers or different vendor companies can uh, create a specific implementation for way hardware, for way infrastructure. But in all in all, it's a common goal to, to have a unified API level, how to manage the clusters uh, towards like higher level end-to-end -end solutions. And if you look at this, this is where our C cluster lifecycle is like several projects heading towards one goal. Yeah, actually, Minikube is the first uh, 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 cluster tools that I use when I get to uh, the Kubernetes. And Minikube will try to bootstrap uh, uh, several virtual machines on your laptop or your or servers and try to install the, all the packages to the virtual machines. So you will have a standalone uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster in your laptop. Actually, Minikube is not working very well in China since it will pull all the uh, registry from the GCRD IO, right? It's not working in China. And the Kubis Ray is a kind of Ansible playbooks. It will contain all the roles uh, to bootstrap all the cluster. So you can reuse uh, all the roles, all the playbooks in the, in the Kubis Ray to customize your own organizations. All right, but let's talk about a few. Uh, so we're not going to talk about all the 17 projects we have. We don't have time for it, unfortunately. And again, unfortunately, we don't have time for deep dives yeah. uh, during this KubeCon. But let's talk about a few of our key sub-projects. Right. The first thing is KubeDM. Uh, as everybody knows, KubeDM went to GA in since 1.13, right? Uh, it is a best practice cluster to help you um, make up a minimum conformance uh, Kubernetes cluster. Well, sorry. Well, the, the user experience is very simple and the cluster is really the most secure. As everybody knows, security is a very tough knot. I cannot tell a lie, right? So uh, actually, we are going to improve the security in the next uh, few releases. So, if you are getting interested, please uh, get involved, and we welcome all your contributions and involvements. Actually, the Kubin scope is very limited. It is intended to be a building block. So, if you are trying to, uh, the Kubin will only try to connect to the API server once it is up, and, if, and in order to get the API server up, it will write a lot of uh, certificates and uh, uh, tokens to the local local folder. Uh, actually, Kubernetes won't 
uh, randomly assign you into your machines and do something else. So it is very safe to use could be and me in your production or your in your uh, cloud environment. Uh, actually, uh, Kubernetes doesn't care about how Kubernetes is running. Actually, you can run your Kubernetes in containerized or using BiCentD. Uh, after the Kubernetes is, is there, so the next thing you do is to install the Kubernetes by your YAM repo or your, or your APT, APT GAN. And the Kubernetes will do all the rest of things for you. And the, the, the control plane is on your, on your node. And the API server, etcd is all there. So the next thing is to to join to to run could be me on the other node and to join the node to the whole cluster. Actually, the thing is not in the scope of could be me because it is released with uh, Kubernetes. Actually, when you try to install Kubernetes on your machines, the package the package manager will automatically install Kubernetes thing up uh, like packages in your uh, into your system. Actually, all the Actually, all the components, uh, all the faces in Kubernetes is composable. That means you don't need to run all the uh, run Kubernetes to do all the things for you. You can just uh, use one or one or two faces because, uh, 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 like, you can try just using Kubernetes to generate all your certificates for you, and you uh, then you use other tools to help bootstrap your cluster. And all this, all these things, we are split into smaller building blocks. So can you reuse in uh, other shell scripts is okay, or your uh, coding or programming co codes is, o is already uh, preferred. Yeah, so again, to show it a bit more in visual and graphical way. So if you look at the bottom part, the KubeADN doesn't really care how you provide your hardware. It can be any of the public clouds. It can be a bunch of your like servers in your uh, basement. Uh, we don't really know, and we don't really care how you provide us with hardware. What we have is what like as soon as you OS installed, as soon as the Kubelet is running, you run the Kube ADM, and Kube ADM will provision you the control node, uh, like control uh, control components. And uh, it will be able to join the worker node to your control plane. And then, like on the upper part, like all kind of your add-ons, all kind of your additional preferences, like the dashboards and so on, it's out of the scope of KubeADM. So one tool does a specific task, does in a specific area. So and this is the key difference, for example, for the tools like the Corps or ours. So those tools are covering the whole area. So we have taken care of, for example, like creating virtual machines on the Amazon cloud when running with KubeADM to provision something and when configure other things like load balancers, et cetera, et cetera, for your cluster. So here's the key differences between the like, con tool concentrated on one task and end-to-end -end solution. Uh, 1.13, uh, the G release. And the, the general feedback we got is the usability is very good, it's pretty good. People are like to, to use Kubernetes to help you bootstrap their clusters. And the, the common feedback that we, we get is the high availability. So this is the, the lack of the Kubernetes doing. So in the next uh, two releases, we just improve the high availability. So speaking about the last releases, so 1.15 got released just a couple of days ago. And um, if you're talking about KubeADM, we have several key changes what came to, to this release. Like first of all is the configuration API for KubeADM get to the beta 2 level. Um, like we released beta 1, I think, in 1.13, if I remember correctly. And after those couple of releases where people already started to understand like what, what our fields are missing, what our fields are not really useful. So based on that, we improved the API. Um, next thing, what um, 
also again was based on the feedback from the users was about the certificate management. So now the Cube ADM during upgrades, it tries to check if your certificates has, are going to expire and if we're very close to expire expiration date, uh, we got renewed it for you. So you have a like seamless usage of your cluster without interruption. Um, Testing is one of the key things was also for this release. So we have now an entirely new test suite to actually do a proper like end-to-end -end testing of installation and upgrades uh, in our CI. And last but obviously not least is, uh, as D mentioned, uh, high availability. Um, it drastically improved in the last releases, like Fabrizio working hard, very hard and our contributors working very hard on that. We have a good documentation about that. Uh, Lucas recently did a screencast, so look at the uh, screencast. Again, sorry, we don't have time to, to do it today, but it, it takes about like 10 minutes, but it shows you all the steps, how you can create the first node, uh, first master node, and when, how to, you join the second, third uh, master nodes in, into your cluster. And if you want to know details uh, about how it's implemented, what challenges there are, uh, I would highly recommend you to actually watch the replay of the KubeCon Europe session done by Luba, uh, Lubomir and Fabrizio about KubeADM deep dive. So Fabrizio was exactly talking about the like, technical details, what, what steps are challenging and why it took us. Uh, quite some time to do uh, high availability right. Yes, and uh, one more thing you most probably already noticed in the previous things, uh, one of the previous slides is we have nowadays official logo of Cube IDM utility. Uh, it was a poll and based on approximately like 20 different uh, logo variants, this was uh, getting a higher amount of votes. And very thanks to Alex. Now it's QBDM official logo. All right, but let's switch gears a bit. So QBDM is fine. It helps you to create like single cluster, multiple nodes, multiple worker, multiple wor uh, master nodes. So most of the customers actually run not a single cluster. We usually have from like five to hundreds or even some customers are having like thousands of the clusters running. So the question starts to have, okay, I created one cluster, how I do it the same way uh, like for all of our my clusters? How I can do the same uh, over the different cloud providers? So in the end of the day, I don't really care how uh, Kubernetes is deployed. What I expect, like as a, let's say, application developer, is what my application should run on Kubernetes, regardless where this Kubernetes cluster is actually hosted. Would it be like Amazon or, or some other provider or on my on-prem installation? So the cluster API tries to solve it. So the cluster API is not a single program. It's a collection of uh, vendor-specific operators. And with vendor-specific operators, we handle the specifics how to create the machine, how to create the, the node of your cluster based on the description. And then on top of that, you have a common layer of controllers uh, which actually do the uh, common logic. So like, like upgrades uh, or teardown of the cluster or configuration. So this, this is common for, for all the providers. So again, to do, uh, to do it graphically. So we have like bottom level parts. We have cluster API where we have uh, specific providers, but on top of it, you have a centralized API where all the clusters look the same uh, to our upper tools. So, for example, like where COPS tries to already use the cluster API, uh, where Cubicorn already using the uh, cluster API, and there are several um, commercial solutions from different companies which 
also trying to manage with uh, multi-clusters uh, in unified way. So why this API is important and like what, what it actually means to have it uh, in declarative way. Uh, here's an example of what you can see about like YAML of uh, uh, CRD, custom resource definition for, for cluster API. So if you are familiar with Kubernetes, you, may, you can find a lot of similar uh, concepts what cluster API have compared to, to your uh, like normal application developer. So you have pod, right? If you forget about like vertical pod after scalar, pod is something immutable. In cluster API, we have the same instance called machine. So machine, once created, it's not changed anymore. So if you want to upgrade, you delete one machine and you create another machine with newer properties. When one layer up. So for pods, you have replica sets. We have machine sets. So it's exactly set of machine with ex exactly the same properties. And we have a con machine controller, which actually uh, creates those machines based on the uh, common template spec. And when, um, um, and when we have, uh, like in Kubernetes side, you have application deployment, which consists of machine sets. Uh, we have machine deployment. And deployment controller helps to, to do the proper operations like scaling it up and down, and how to do the rolling upgrades, and practically like similar approach how you manage your application. Now it's applicable to how you manage your infrastructure. Your infrastructure become described in a way what like you have a YAML file, you have it in Git, uh, it's completely repeatable, you have a GitOps for your uh, uh, whole infrastructure running. So let's like in short what uh, cluster API is about. And um, similar to KubeADM deep dive, if you want to listen uh, about specifics or uh, like details how a cluster API is implemented, what are the current challenges, I would highly recommend you to, to look at um, deep dive session from uh, KubeCon uh, Europe. Uh, Jason was doing a good job uh, of describing it in more details. What Alex talked about is from a high cluster level, but actually we have a small problem to, to solve. How many uh, flags do you remember to, to start by your API server? Uh, how many steps do you want to, uh, you have to do to create your self-hosted webhook API server? So actually we are doing to uh, make them to be component-based. What does it mean? It means all your components can you reuse the same repo to build up your own services? And uh, actually, you know, the most uh, distinguished feature of Kubernetes is its declarative APIs. So what about uh, the, the, the component configs? All the component configs are configed with flex, flex with flex. And the flex will be deprecated in the next few releases, so you need to modify your flex. And uh, it is com incompatible for the like, uh, administrators to manage your clusters because it's not versioned, it's not checked. All your flex are, uh, are just sent over to the uh, arguments of the, your shell scripts. It is not uh, uh, well uh, documented. What actually component config to do is try to make it uh, more maintainable more configurable and the version. So uh, we have just uh, created a lot of in the internal uh, configs, such as control manager, scheduler, and, uh, you, and could, be, could be proxy. If you noticed, the, the components that start, that start up by the could be me have already used some of the component configs, such as could be proxy. So uh, only one or two flex are needed, no more acts. No more arguments. This is just a relief for the administrators to to keep a version or stable the uh, YAML file because 
uh, it will be well uh, compatible with the older versions. So what it will like? Finally, so only one flag is needed. So you will just notice there is no kubi config in the flag. Where is it? It has been placed into the schema. So all the all the flags all the so so all the flags will be the. Uh, all the flags will be will be written to the the single YAML file or JSON file, uh, and the, the scheduler com component or the control manager component will just render the, the YAML file or JSON file to its, to its own config API types. So it's very convenient convenient for uh, internal internal controllers and external uh, codes to to share the same 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 settings. And uh, we are st still uh, involving the, the component APIs. So if you get interested, please come to Harbus. Yeah, and just to complement what you just said about the com com component config, the reason why we have it is what it's not only a simplification of the flux. Uh, it's more about how to manage your cluster more dynamically. So. Uh, it's often the scenario what you create a cluster, or you create it with a specific uh, set of options. And when, like, a few days out, uh, later, or maybe even a few hours later, you realize what, oh, I, I actually need to uh, change that flag. And with current set of tools, it's really hard to, to change this. So what you usually do is, like, you tear down your cluster, and when you start recreating it again with the uh, right set of flags. So this component config we allow to to do with changes of the configuration some more dynamic. So you, you you simplify a task of maintenance of your cluster. Yeah, it's always very easy to get a misconfigured of your flex. You might just uh, have a typo or have a mis misconfigured uh, the the path. So it's very so if we have a schema to help help you check all the. Uh, the, the flex is very convenient for you to, to diagnose uh, your flex or your settings. Yeah, and if we're speaking about contributions, so we're, all the components, all the sub-projects, everything what we have is actually, uh, we need help. And some, some pieces of the projects are uh, easy to contribute, some, some pieces of the projects like we have more of uh, like, more boring and uh, labor work. So for example, like the, the component config, it, it's not not hard thing to do. It's not uh, like rocket science. It's just like big amount of work which needs to be done across all the components of Kubernetes. So speaking about the contributions, uh, we, as already mentioned, we have hundreds of already existing contributors. And uh, we see cluster lifecycle actually quite good of uh, value of our contributors. So every cycle we are, like SIG leads, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, whom we want to promote. So if you want to get the Kubernetes membership, if you want to get like to the review or approval status, contribute and gain your pass to the uh, uh, Kubernetes community. And unlike uh, many of our six, uh, we see cluster lifecycle is not a US centric. We have multiple contributors in the Europe time zone. So uh, if you're talking about here, about China, we have a quite good time overlap where, where people from Europe can help with people from Asia time zone and then hand over it to US time zones. Yeah, speaking of China, in last week, I mentioned that we're, we are trying to uh, have a back weekly meeting in China final time, and finally it comes. So uh, actually, we are just uh, uh, want to hold a bi weekly meeting, and uh, it's China free friendly time. So if you get interested, uh, just uh, tell me and give me some feedback. We are still collecting the appropriate time slot for Chinese users. So and I will be the chair of the Chinese uh, Chinese SIG, uh, SIG bi weekly meeting, and uh, we are planning to start our first meeting from the uh, next month, July or August. And how will you contribute? There are a lot of ways to get involved in the in our SIG. You can just uh, to search all the SIG class lifecycle label 
in the Kubernetes issues or pull request, you can help review the, the code and help, get, uh, help, uh, help you get familiar with what we are doing right now. And now we also have well documented the docs on our uh, GitHub. So you can try to uh, read, read the whole doc document to help you get familiar with what we are doing, what we are trying to do next, and uh, what you can uh, do, what you can get from our like, community. So, again, coming back to graphical representation, where we are as a C cluster lifecycle, we have multiple projects, and all of those projects were in different shapes. So, KubeADM already in GA state, so general allowability, so means like stable component. But we have a lot of components which we are still in like definition state. So, like a good example is cluster add-ons. Like, what is cluster add-ons? What we really need to have? What we can do it later? What can be considered as application? How we actually do uh, cluster add-on management? Like, when etcd ADM, we know what we want. We we have some proof of concept code which was distilled from our previous experiences. But again, to make it the real tool, make it real GA level, stable level, it will require a lot of work. The cluster API, we reached finally like the first alpha stage where we understand like, okay, what we are doing as the first thing. But uh, to get it to GA level, to get it like as a stable API, it will take a lot of work. And if you look at our small components, like component config, <laughs> it's a lot of work to uh, to do, and for provisioners, again, like something is already stable because many people contributed, and some of them is in the very beginning. So, you can find the project based on your interest. You can find the project based on your skills. You can there are like set of easy tasks to help. There are a lot of uh, complex problems where you want to get like deep dive involved in in those. So if you are trying to know all what we have done before, you can just visit the YouTube to see all our recordings there. And we also have a lot of Slack channels. You can just ping us or ask us some questions in the Slack channel. And just check out the documents list here. You will just know better about what we are doing right now. So. Uh... We don't have deep dives on many of our components, but at least uh, two separate sessions for uh, components which is belonging to C cluster lifecycle will be today. Unfortunately, both of them are in exactly the same time slot, but uh, you might be interested. So the cube spray is uh, unsymbled uh, set of playbooks how to deploy your cluster, like end-to-end -end solution. And Minikube, as Dee already mentioned, it was about like local uh, cluster and virtual machines for your laptop environment. And of course, check the recordings from Europe. In Europe, we had uh, more uh, SIG sessions with deep dives with more interesting uh, information and more technical details. So, so thank you for all your comments. And we are waiting for all your contributions to our SIG. So don't feel intimidated if you have any good ideas or comments on Amosik. Thanks for your coming. Yeah, and we have right now, I think, two minutes what we can do, a uh, couple of questions. And if if not right now, when we, we, we will be available after the session, we can continue discussion offline. Do you have a second microphone? Wait a second, My microphone for the recording. OK,我刚才看的就是说,我反正库布的命,我是用了很多,但是我刚才看的的,可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能可能
uh, there is a lot of testing testing works and uh, incompatible uh, works to uh, for the for the next few release. So it will be measured in one one or two release. So if you get interested, just come to help us to improve more stable. Uh, <coughs> I got a question here. So uh, when you bootstrap a, a cluster, so a uh, customer want a, a ready to use cluster, not just a, a few nodes, the master the nodes. We want the uh, storage backend to be ready to use. We, we sh should have the storage class defined for the backend. We should have the, the uh, networking uh, well defined, uh, isolated from other clusters. So. With current uh, solution, the goal is to bootstrap a, a ready-to-use cluster or just a, a, you know, a scratch. Actually, Kubernetes enemy is, is product-ready product mean tools to help you bootstrap a cluster. So yeah, but, is, uh, but we think, yes, I, I understand the concern. So with QBDM responsible for, uh, for just bringing the basic cluster. But what you are looking for is probably something what, like where higher level end-to-end -end tools are looking at, like like Minikube does it for the local cluster, where Corpse or Cube Spray does it for uh, like multi-machine clusters. So look at these higher level tools which is built on top of APIs what C cluster lifecycle is maintaining, and that's probably what you are looking for. I'm I'm not sure if this. Uh, all these things can be plugged to a pluggable, or you, this is a pluggable, pluggable architecture, right? Yes. So we can hook into any step to make sure this uh, uh, maybe a total solution happen. Uh, yeah, I think you can just uh, reuse Kubernetes as your building block since we have split the, uh, the, the function into smaller phases. We call it the phases. Uh, and then you just uh, try to reuse the code uh, of the single phases to help you uh, to, to be hooked in your own customized uh, tools of my manager or uh, custom management. Yeah, and uh, for example, I saw I, I saw the different tools which was built on top of Cube Spray. So Cube Spray is a collection of uh, playbooks. So you have a roles for most of the phases, but nothing prevents you to reuse those rules into your like higher level uh, deployment tool with plug at your specifics. All right, we, we are out of time. Thank you very much for coming to our session. Uh, if you have more questions, let's continue in the hallway. Yeah, and uh, see you in next Kubica. Thank you.